Hello everybody, apologies, it's been a while since my last video. If you didn't catch that last video, I did say my scheduling is going to be a little bit up and down over the next few weeks and unfortunately that does mean I'm not able to dedicate as much time to the channel as I would like, but I will, wherever I can, drop videos because in the midst of all the craziness that is my life at the moment I'm still finding time to purchase new acquisitions and I just had to share some of these with you. Now before we get into today's video, you've probably noticed there are some changes to the channel in terms of the look and feel. I want to give a huge shout out and a massive thank you to Odin Anon, a friend of the channel who's created some new branding and some new images for me. And you'll notice there's a new logo and a new end screen at the end of the videos that I'll be using from now on, plus some tweaks to the banner as well. Uh, so a big, big thank you to Odin Anon. Really fabulous stuff. I'm really, really super impressed and I hope you all agree. Okay, with that said, let's take a look at the X06 Quark. I can't wait to dive into this video with you because I'm so impressed with this figure. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, I am definitely picking and choosing when it comes to the X06 line of Star Trek figures. One reason for that is because they come thick and fast and it's quite difficult to keep up financially. But the other aspect is that I'm really just going to be cherry picking my favourite characters or having representation of certain aliens. Now, for me, whilst I do really like Deep Space Nine, it's a line I'm probably not going to go very deep on. But one of the key characters that I really do adore is Quark. And plus, he also represents the Ferengi more generally. And I love being able to populate my 1-6 collection with exotic aliens and Quark just ticks both of those boxes for me. So let's take a look at this packaging. It is the standard sleeve packaging that we have seen before in the rest of the line which is uh, pretty nice. We have this sort of glossy image of the front and centre there of the figure himself which looks really nice. This is a very nice portrait of the figure. Then in the top left hand corner we have this foil embossed Star Trek Deep Space Nine logo which is absolutely fantastic. And then we have on the right hand side uh, this image here which is beautiful and it goes, wraps around the side of the panel as well. Uh, we have this fantastic illustrated image of the cast from Deep Space Nine. We even see an image of the Defiant there as well. Uh, this is glorious artwork. I think this is absolutely fantastic. I love how each one is specially created for each uh, show or each era um, of, of Star Trek according to the character in the box. I love this, definitely gives it a sense of identity and it just looks absolutely fantastic. So overall the presentation is marvellous. If we flip it and look at the back of the packaging, this is a little bit more bland. We just have some simple photographs of the figure and there's various accessories and then some small prints at the bottom there. Of course, I did mention this is a slip case, so you can slide this outer cardboard case up and underneath we have this fantastic window display where we can see the figure and all of his bits and pieces. Now there's not an awful lot of decoration around the side panels, in fact there's nothing, and then on the back it's just a list of credits, so there's nothing really worth displaying here, but it's all about that central image on the front of the slide case. So the first thing to note upon opening this figure is just how impressed I was with him. He's immediately impressive. Whereas I've been a little bit disappointed and a bit more critical of the Shran and the Locutus of Borg, Quark immediately surpassed my expectations. Let's start off by taking a look at this fantastic head sculpt. Now, yes, it is an alien, um, so it's probably a little bit easier to get the likeness, but I think this is absolutely phenomenal. This is pitch perfect. I love how each individual tooth is individually sculpted and painted and just matches exactly what we see on screen. Uh, I think the paint apps around the eyes in particular are really good, but also there's some different tones, washes running through the face and around the top of the head there as well, giving that a little bit more depth and texture and I suppose a sense of realism. And the dimensions of this just look absolutely spot on. So I have to say this is a fantastic likeness. I love this sculpt and it's just really, really cool. It is like having a miniature version of the character on display. As ever with X06, the tailoring is absolutely spot on. I love this costume. I really love the materials they've used. So not only is the pattern pretty accurate, uh, the colours they've used, it seems to be the right tones, which is wonderful. There's such a lot of complex <laughs> colours going on here. So it looks absolutely fantastic to the eyes. It looks very screen accurate, but also the materials they've used is really nice as well. So this outer tunic is a sort of silky feel. It's like a silky cotton, which is really nice to the touch. Uh, and it 
just it just helps to tailor the figure beautifully so it just looks absolutely fantastic and there's these lovely little plastic pieces as well on the the top of his uh, tunic there and then again in the central sort of clasp uh, it just looks absolutely fantastic I love the attention to detail and I love how accurate this is uh, likewise the materials they've used just wonderful to the touch and just overall just creates this fantastic presentation of this character his hands, of course, are uniquely sculpted because he is a Ferengi, so you can't just recycle any of the human hands that we've had in the series so far. So there is definitely a different look, tone, and feel to these hands, particularly if we look at the fingernails there, we can see the black that's been used, but also the shape and the size and the scaling of these are a little bit different to what we've seen previously. I also really like his pants again. These are a silky sort of cotton, but I love the flares at the top of the pants there and how they sort of flap out. Uh, that looks really, really cool. Very distinct and, of course, unique to this character. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And then if we take a look at his boots, we can see that these are all one piece. These are a sort of rubbery plastic kind of feel. These are probably a little bit less impressive. Whilst they look screen accurate and I have no issues with the colouring with it, it's a shame there isn't more of a wash running through these, just give them a bit more depth and texture. And also the fact that they are one piece will definitely hinder articulation as we'll see in a moment. And speaking of articulation, he does have two points of articulation in his head and in his neck. So you can spin his head all the way around, 360 degrees if you so wish, but you can also lean it left and right. And you can actually get some pretty decent uh, motion out of both the neck and the head here, which is fantastic. Likewise, you can bend that head and that neck forwards, and you can also pull it back a really healthy distance, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now he's got ball joints in the shoulders as well, so he can lift his arms all the way up and out. There is a complimentary bicep swivel at the top there as well. There are double joints in the elbow, so the hand can go all the way to the back of his head there, which is wonderful. And then you'll notice there are these ball joints at the wrist there. Uh, so of course they will rotate 360 degrees and they will also hinge forwards and backwards as well. Now, there is articulation in the waist, but mine's a little bit stiff and you want to be careful with this, but you can move him from side to side and you can also lean him left and right a pretty healthy distance here, which is nice to see. Now, he will bend forwards and backwards as well. Again, it's a little bit more restrictive, uh, but you have to be very careful and gentle. But yeah, you can get some decent uh, motion out of this, which is nice to see. There are hinges, of course, in the hips, so the legs will kick out to the side. Mine's a little bit stiff and I don't want to push it too far, but I do feel it will go further. Likewise, there is a swivel at the top of the thighs, but again, mine's a little bit stiff, so be careful with this. The legs will also kick forwards. Again, mine, a bit resistance to this, so I'm not going to push it too far at this stage, but they will kick forwards. And then there is another double joint at the knee, of course, so that leg will lift all the way back there, which is absolutely fantastic. There is a swivel at the ankle there, allowing the boot to move around and I feel like there is uh, a hinge in the ankle but you're not really going to, to do anything with these boots on. So how does he fare when it comes to accessories? Well the answer is very very well. Super impressive array here. He comes with an additional five hands. Three are right hands and two are left hands. Uh, obviously each one is distinctly different which is great and they serve a distinct function or purpose in terms of the other accessories which include a Ferengi data pad, a quill, the Ferengi rules of acquisition book, and various amounts and sizes of gold pressed latinum. I just want to highlight a couple of these, including the Ferengi data pad. I love the sculpting, but also the sticker on there highlighting some detail, which looks absolutely fantastic. But the king of these accessories has to be this rules of acquisition. The Ferengi book is beautiful. This hard outer edge, which is very nicely sculpted, but inside there's a couple of stickers and then there's individual pages. Each one is different, having all the various rules of acquisition. This is a masterstroke. I'm super impressed with this and did not anticipate this level of detail detail. So this is absolutely lovely and I give them top marks for this. Where I'd score them down, however, is on the base. Uh, if you've seen any of my other recent X06 videos, you'll know this is a reoccurring <laughs> nitpick that I have uh, with this line. But they are recycling the same base now with every single figure. And I think it would be nice if each base uh, had a different look and feel. When we got the Q figure last year, he had his own unique base. And it would be nice if each character had something that represented the race or the era of the show um, more appropriately, rather than using the same transparency transporter base for every single character. 
Now there's so many extras and accessories here that you're spoiled for choice for creating different looks with this character when you put him on display. There's so many different things you can do that accurately sum up this character. I can't think of anything else I would want to come with this figure and that's really satisfying as a collector. So I love the various things that he comes with here and I'm really pleased to say as well that he has no issues holding all of these various sized accessories in his hands. There's a nice tight gripping hand here to hold the individual slips of Latin which is lovely, but also he has this wider grip and I was a little bit worried at first that it wouldn't be tight enough to hold his data pad, but actually just smoothly fits in there as if it was molded specifically for it, which I'm guessing it was. Uh, and it just, it just fits beautifully without being too tight or too loose. It just slides in magnificently and he has no issues holding this whatsoever and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now, one extra feature they did build in, you'll notice that on his widest gripping hand to hold rules of acquisition, there is actually a peg there, and there is a peg hole on the back of the book. The idea being that these would slot into place. Now, when I had these two items individually, the, the free hand and the book, they would connect together quite neatly. However, when the hand is in uh, actually in the peg and I tried to add the book, it, I just couldn't make it. It just wouldn't fit in. It just wouldn't hold it. Uh, it wasn't very secure. So I don't think that peg is quite deep enough. Neither is the hole to really hold it in place. That's my experience of it. That being said though, it will just rest quite nicely into his forearm and just let gravity hold it in place. And it looks pretty damn good to be honest. <laughs> so I don't think you necessarily need this, uh, but as a feature, I'm not sure if it's really working that well. And then finally, I thought I would do a quick scale comparison to show how Quark sizes up against the other figures in your 1.6 collection, because Quark obviously is a slightly smaller character. So it is really nice that XO6 have thought through the scaling here, which is fantastic. So here he is standing next to the QMX Captain Picard, and you can see that obviously Picard is slightly taller uh, than Quark. And I think the scaling is pretty accurate. This looks about right to me. Uh, so really nice to consider that. Really looking forward to getting a character like Worf, who's a little bit taller, a little bit broader. Order, uh, and seeing how he compares in the scaling. And so there you have it. To be honest, I don't have anything but good things to say about this figure. I love the articulation. I love the tailoring and the costuming. I love the sculpt and I love the accessories. I think this is a really inventive figure and, and probably for me, one of the personal favorites in this line so far. He's right up there with the Captain Archer figure, which for me was also a high benchmark for this series. Uh, and it's very nice to have uh, my expectations surpassed. Uh, whereas I've been slightly disappointed with the Locutus possibly because I had my expectations set so high for that particular release, uh, maybe it couldn't live up to it. Uh, with Quark, it's quite the opposite. I really wanted to have the character, I was looking forward to getting him, but he's just so much better in the flesh than I possibly could have imagined. Uh, so I'm really, really happy and delighted uh, with this release. It's one of my personal favourites, and I can't really fault it. There's a couple of minor little nitpicks. Uh, the fact that the peg hole doesn't really work that well with the book of acquisitions, uh, the fact that the boots are one piece and don't have it shading but these these are such minor things overall uh, this is this is 10 on 10 I, I love this and I can't say enough good things about it so well done exo6 uh, this is absolutely fantastic more like this please if you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon